Good morning everybody and happy Friday! Um, it's Friday again in North Arran Primary School and some really good news today is that in about ooh, 10 minutes time, um, Year 5, 5 Birch, will be returning to school after nearly two weeks of self-isolating at home and we cannot wait to see Year, year 5. Uh, we've missed you absolutely heaps and really wanted to say good morning as well to four Sycamore and both reception classes because you're coming back on Monday, hooray, hooray, and um, we can't wait to have have our school all back together again and a massive well done to all of those children in those classes who've been working so hard um, your teachers have been thrilled with you and um, for coming up to all of the live lessons three live lessons a day and for also sending some brilliant work in Mrs Scrimshaw has been showing me some of the great quality um, that she's been getting back from children I've just got a few examples here and um, Felicity for example has written a really lovely long letter um, which was her English task and it's just as good as um, she would have done um, in the classroom. Um, absolutely fantastic and Felicity's work's been um, outstanding during home learning. And then I'm sorry for the way these are printed, um, my fault and my printer. But also just wanted to show you the day-to-day the -day quality. This is Holly's maths work, a photograph of her maths work from this week. And you can just see the care that she's taken even though she's working at home. Um, to be completing her learning and carrying on with her learning. And then two really great pieces of history work. I'll just drop one on the floor. Come on, Mrs. Gardefield. Here we go. And in history, year five at home, have been learning about the ancient Egyptians. And this is Lila's work. And Lila's created a poster, an information poster, all about ancient Egyptian farmers. So there's the first part of it. And I suspect, Lila, that that's the River Nile. And then I love these. These made me really smile. Look at those. We've got horse. Um, is it a horse? No. It's a, a dog, I think. Um, and we've got a farmer there by the River Nile. Beautiful drawing. And thank you, Lila, for taking such care with your work. And another person that caught Mrs Scrimshaw's eye this week uh, with his ancient Egyptian poster is Morgan. And Morgan, you chose to do... Um, a poster all about hieroglyphics, which again has come out in two halves. I'm sorry about that. Um, here's the first half of Morgan's poster with all of his information about that ancient language of hieroglyphics and how it was used to communicate. And the second half there. And again, I just love to think of you sitting at home, um, doing your work and doing your learning, even when you're not in the school classroom. So well done to all the children that have been um, learning at home and all of the teachers who've been helping our children to learn at home. We just can't wait to have you back. And some other bits and pieces of what's been going well this week. Um, just wanted to mention a big well done to all of our year one children in both classes who have been starting early on their computing skills in our school um, we we become really really great at programming um, and algorithms by the time the children leave at year six um, and in year one is where we start really and year one have been making videos this week all about telling other children how to use a b-bot which is a programmable robot and they've been programming um, the B-Bot in multiple steps to make it follow directions. Um, I'll just show you a very simple one if you've never used one. I'll just switch my camera around. That. There we go. So here we go. So our B-Bot, I'll just do a simple one. So if you want to make him go forward, you can use the arrow key. Here he comes. Oh. I think, goodness me, stop. Oh, Miss Horsefall, I'm having a disaster. Yeah. I'll just give him to you. I think I must have hung Miss Horsefall. Can you make him just go forward nicely for me? I feel like you mustn't have cleared his memory. Oh, I didn't clear his memory. Now, if I'd have watched the video properly, it would have been clear, wouldn't it? Um, I need to clear his memory before I do the next step. So I'll try again. I'll press forward. Okay. There we go, and go. This time he should just go forward one amount and stop. Hooray, I did it right. Oh, it's always good to learn from other people, isn't it? Um, just put ourselves back that way. Okay, so well done, year one. You made some super videos and you've done some brilliant learning this week. 
and other bits and pieces I want to mention are year three Miss Davis's class you've been having great fun this week um I went in one day this week and Miss Davis was looking a little bit harassed and she said oh Mrs Scarterfield I've got a really complicated art lesson coming up this afternoon and the children are learning about stone age art and how stone age man and woman would have created those amazing cave drawings that um, you can still see today in, in, in particular places. Um, but they could only use what was available to them at the time. So in year three, they've been having a great time making an outline drawing for a cave drawing that they would have drawn if they were cavemen or women. And then using spices, bark, leaves, fruit, um, natural dyes and having an experiment with how they could use those as paint. So I'll just show you some examples. Um, so first one, I love this drawing. It's Juno's drawing. So this is Juno's drawing that she will want to she would want to draw on uh, a cave wall. It looks like a saber tooth tiger there. Fantastic large drawing. And then here's Juno's experimentation with natural dyes. So looking on there, we've got things like turmeric, cinnamon, paprika, raspberries, twigs and leaves. And just look at the range of colours that Juno was able to create. So well done, Juno. I'll just show you that saber tooth tiger one more time because it's so great. And then the other one I wanted to share was, um, it was this one, Max's. And Max has gone for a beautiful, it looks a bit like a, a robin actually. Or so oh, it's got speckles on its chest. Maybe it's a thrush, I'm not sure, or a sparrow. There's his drawing that he would look like to create. And then Max has also had a super duper time creating some colours that he could use on his cave drawing. I love that lovely subtle pink of the raspberry colour. That's beautiful. So well done to Max and well done Miss Davis. Um, that was a tough lesson. You had to have it all set up and it was all a little bit messy. Um, but the children had a whale of a time and I know many of them went home and talked about it at home with mums and dads. So uh, well done everyone in year three. Uh, what else do I have to share with you this week? Let's have a look. Oh, I know. Let's go to year six. Year six have been having a good time. Um, and this is Chestnut Class. And Chestnut Class, I just wanted to share with you some of their music work. And they've been learning about um, how to read music, really. Not using conventional notation, but using graphic scores. And how you can create a graphic score like these. Um, that you can actually then play using instruments. And I think you've been linking your work to uh, music from Wallace and Gromit, which is really good fun. And I just wanted to share with you Zacharias because I looked through them this morning. And Zachariah, I know you've only written this at the moment and you've not actually played it. But what I loved about yours is that I can see when we start to play this on musical instruments from this side through to the end, that you've got three layers of different sounds that are happening at the same time, ending with a lovely sprinkly sound at the end. Not sure what these ones represent, but I know that you do. And I think next week you're going to be getting to have a go at actually playing that music on different musical instruments. So, um, Zachariah, I really want to listen to your piece. And well done for adding three layers onto your musical graphic score. Fantastic. And then what else? Last thing I wanted to share was some Sky and Spocks. Uh, and those of you that know me know why I say skyants and skizzers because it helps me to remember that there's a silent C in there. Um, and also, Year 6 have been having a really, really fun time um, because their topic in science is all about light and how light travels and how light reflects. And I believe this week that you've been having some games with mirrors where you've been trying to create a Z shape of a path of light by reflecting it off different mirrors. And next week, I think you are going to be making a periscope so that's going to allow you to see round corners uh, which you can't normally do but you're having to learn a lot about light to be able to manipulate it so you can so you can use it in different ways and um, so this is the kind of the beginning of your understanding of light this is Matilda's work and um, Matilda's showing us there how light reflects and the direction that it travels in in straight lines there and then similarly we have Olivia's work Again, showing us how light reflects. So 
So I really would hope to maybe join you for your Periscope lesson. That sounds like really, really good fun. So amazing work across the curriculum this week at home and at school. Um, next week's really special Monday, all back together. Um, but in the meantime, well done, everybody. It's it's not been easy, has it? But you've all done a brilliant job, whether you're here or at home. Um, and, uh, you know, just really, really pleased to have everybody back next week. Fingers crossed. In the meantime, have a lovely weekend. Do all the things that you like to do this weekend safely. Uh, keep cosy, keep warm, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.